It was supposed to be too easy. Look at these two. An unstoppable duo, a perfect setup. Lorraine Huber, 2017 Freeride World Tour Champion, transitioning from professional skier to coach. I'm learning completely new skills now. I'm a beginner again. Takes on Hedvig Wessel, this explosive talent. Two-time Olympian and World Cup mogul skier with an Achilles heel of big mountain line selection. So together, Lorraine's experience, mentorship, guidance, Hedvig's fearlessness, commitment, 50-foot backflip. I've always had that vision of I want to win or I want to be the best. Together, they progress the sport, land Hedvig on top of the podium, and take the title. World champion. I mean, hey, that's a movie. Like, that actually is a movie. It's called Rocky. Plus, you've got trending themes such as women helping women, the vulnerability of transition, paying homage to the paving of the way and the passing of the torch. That is some powerful female content. All of the men that cleared budget for it were very excited by the prospect of it. And I, I am an award, who am I? I'm an award-winning you know, action, action sports, sort of adventure, kind of raw, sort of gritty, kind of honest, documentarian film director narrator what i am saying is that if anyone can make these two shine on a micro budget it is me but i'm worried because there's some tension like we're just getting started and they're already butting heads and then, no you're supposed to be there and then oh well, yeah. i guess it's it's um you maybe need to trust me a little bit but that's drama people do love drama i should push it It'd be great for the movie. God, this burger is good. Blow my whistle, baby. Blow my whistle, baby. Just kidding. This isn't a ski movie. It's an episode of reality TV. What did she say? Oh, dude, I feel it's so interesting. It's just like... Did you say anything? I could feel your stress, like, trying to communicate to her that you just, like, don't want the help anymore. Because, I, honestly, I think I'm like, I see it kind of two ways. Yeah, I'm like, one, you need more years or, like, more experience under your belt so that maybe you could get that feedback, like, and pivot on top of the run. Hope oh, she didn't like that. Note to self, me weighing in, triggering. Perfect. Fun, fun, fun. Now let me set the stage for the drama that is about to ensue. There's no turning back. There's no turning back now, baby. Blow my whistle, baby. A final category of the day, Ski Woman. Level has just been raising and raising. The Free Ride World Tour Hullabaloo. Essentially a collection of some of the most talented and attractive athletes in the world. Do you have a secret you want to tell me? I can turn the mic off. Dedicating their entire winter to being paraded about five different countries to ski down a bunch of rocks for approximately 30 seconds without taking a digger. Oh, oh. No. oh that's a big tumble. Side note, Lorraine is also commentating this year as the first ever female commentator in the history of the tour. No. Oh, I really hope the Emmer is okay. Going for a bit of a slide now. One tumbling happens and then it's just tumbling as though for the rest of the time. Next rider in, Hedvig Vessel from Norway. She was on the World Cup in ski moguls for seven years and has transitioned lightning fast into free riding. In free ride, it's like you have those five runs. That's it. And you might fly all the way to Japan or you fly all the way to Alaska, all the way to Canada, and then you might like crash at the top of your run. That's really heartbreaking and it adds pressure. That's right, the peak performance rider out of Norway. In fact, a mental strength coaching student of yours, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, free ride coaching, Neil. Her mental strength is, wow, that was super nice. Adding that air into there after her first section and... Oh, Whoa! Oh, yes! Hedvig Vessel, huge, Becky. Wow, we Hedvig. No one else heard that. It's such yeah. a popper. I'm looking back up at it right now with my own eyes and the landing tracks are so far below the takeoff. And the snow there is also quite firm. 80 wow. points for Hedvig. Amazing. I am in the hot seat. 
We have Evelina Nilsson dropping in now from Sweden. Evelina back as a wild card, aiming for the same feature that Hedvig flipped With a big backflip too. Oh, no. Ariana Tricomi, next rider to drop in from Italy. Well known, of course, double world champion. She loves playful venues. Cross Hill Air seem to be her favorite. Playful, fun, making way over to the lookers left side of the venue with a 360. Yes. 360. Score coming in now for Ariana Tricomi. Nice. Second place, 75.33 points, sitting just behind Hedwig Vessel. Good way to start the season off. My mom is a psychologist, and she did not, she didn't know what to do with me. Either it goes to hell with Hedwig, or it goes really well. I was violent. I just had a lot, like my head was exploding. And sport was for sure where I found uh, peace, I guess, and I just had to get my energy out. With the waiting in freeride is for sure a big challenge for me. I just want to do it now, you know? I just want to, let's do it. And then we can do something else, and then we can move on. I don't need to be 40 before I retire. Good morning, freeride family! As a forerunner, it's going to be important for me not to ruin any of the takeoffs or landings for the riders. I've got so much shit going on right now. Hopefully I'm not spreading myself too thin. I'm just trying to stay relevant. This morning I woke up and when I checked Instagram, there were all these comments, uh, some tagging my name about the new broadcast. Direct comments like this one person said, yeah, the commentating wasn't very good. She was first in 2000 and, um, sorry, I, yeah, forget that. A couple were like, yeah, bring the, the dream team back from last year. So they weren't really speaking negatively about Neil. I, I kind of felt like it was more me. Hi, Katie. How are we? I, I actually have some big news. The Freer World Tour decided to pull me off the job as commentator for the rest of the tour. What? Yeah. Can I do that? I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, this is like, a, a massive slap in the face, it feels like. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, like 10 minutes ago, and then we drove past these guys. And we're like, it's, it's off. But it was like, quick. Yeah. And then she just did That's the guy that serious. took Lorraine's <laughs> job. My name is Derek Foos, and I'm here with my man, ski partner, big mountain slayer, and Kiwi legend, Neil Willem. And Neil, how are you feeling about being back in Canada? Feeling pretty damn good, Derek. Good looking out, thanks. Hey Derek. Hi. Can I buy you a drink? Yes. So, you're really good at commentating. Thank you. Yeah. Have you done it for a long time? Um, All right, taking a look at the ski women standing absolutely stacked. Hedvig Vessel holding down the golden bib right now with a commanding performance in Hakaba. She's where she wants to be. This is her goal. She wants to win this tour. But Ariana Tricomi is going to have something to say about that. She knows exactly what it takes to be a champion on this tour. She's done it twice before, and you know she's hungry for a victory here in Kicking Horse. They're like equal prize money for all categories. First female commentator. Just kidding. It was a gender decision on the way in, and that was right. And that was really conflicting for me because yeah. I was like, I like what you're doing, but I don't want to lose my job about it. It would have been way harder to take if they were like. Well, you suck at it. Right now, we've got the third member of our broadcast team, Lorraine Huber, up on top. She's going to do a course preview for us. Here I am in Stargate yeah. number two at the second. Freer World Tour stop in Kicking Horse, Golden BC. And it's kind of gnarly up here. When I heard that Lorraine was going to be working with Hedvig, I was like, that's a, a sick for Hedvig. You know, a former world champion. She knows how to get it done in this arena. Intense day, a comp day. Hey, I'm dropping. Three, two, one. 
one dropping. I think I miss that intensity of experience. Like you can't simulate that. The powder is good. Keep your skis under control and point it down towards the finish line. I still like love being an athlete. Oh. I love being an athlete. That was short and sweet. Oh my gosh. What a rush to be up there in the start. I tell you what. There's a bit of a silver lining in the way it all went down in that we got a massive resource that the tour didn't have before, like a seriously missing piece in that we now have a finish line interviewer. Rolling on into the ski women's category and we are starting with a bang. The champion here from last year at Kicking Horse Resort, Jacqueline Pollard. She knows how to get it done on this face. Sending the corners now, she's into the goods. Yeah, she took that deep, taking this one deep too, no hesitation. So far, Jacqueline Pollard absolutely backing things up from last year, but she's going deep off this one. Jacqueline Whoa. Pollard, wow, what a way to get <laughs> yeah. the ski women started. That was absolutely spectacular. Straight out of the gate now, Jess Hodder, Kiwi rider. No hesitation here from Jess Hodder. This is looking like another heater in the ski women's field, looking strong right now. And Jess Hodder getting herself into this lower zone. So quick as well, sending it and stopping it. Yeah, Jess. Oh, that was Whoa. mega. Another fantastic run in the ski women's field. Jessica Hodder lighting it up here and moving into the hot seat. Elizabeth Gerritsen on course right now. Down to the corners, big boost there. Elizabeth is on fire right now, another heater. So cutting back to with that same one, but Dublin full line. Boom, Elizabeth on fire. These women are making those judges work hard. I was just about to say that, Derek. Our reigning free ride two, world two, tour two, champion, two, Ariana Trancomi. Ari been in the top three overall for the last four years in a row, and that's why. It's her signature move. A shifty off that one, then cutting back. Is it going to be the same as Elizabeth? Yes, it is. Getting a little bit wild in the air, but stomping it and coming out hot and clean. That was a smoking run from our defending world tour champion. Damn, the level has been high today, Derek. Hotter still sitting pretty right now in the hot seat. Back over the ridge, top of Ozone, our current Freeride World Tour leader, Hedvig Vessel out of Norway. She's going to drop out of start number one right now. Hedvig Vessel on course. Good start there for Hedvig, and now moving across, she's finding a feature in that zone that nobody else has hit so far. Yeah, we saw a bit of traffic on that, especially from the snowboard guys last time. So Hedvig taking inspiration from a different category and skiing just as hard and fast and strong. Yeah, Hedvig's been working on her skiing skills, you know, changing over from that mogul style, and you can see it. Oh, absolute flash of that double. Down. Hedvig Vessel looking strong right now, and she is absolutely smoking across the bottom. Another lightning fast run. Neil, this ski women's field is on fire today. <laughs> We're going to check in with Lorraine, who is down in the finish corral with our ski women's winner today, Jess Hodder. I know you were disappointed with your run in Hakuba. I know you've been feeling the pressure. What kind of emotions are you experiencing right now after your amazing line and win here? We thought that it was going to be a good line and it's going to be a sick line and it, it's a line that if you do it well is supposed to be up there. She might have wanted me to tell her to get into some more difficult terrain. I kind of feel like pissed in a way. I'm like, did we choose a too easy line? How could we choose a too easy line? But she didn't even do the double. If she had it done as a double, it would have been sweet because Elizabeth had the same and she's third. Yes, everyone's good, good, but I want to be the best. I want to ski best, you know? I certainly don't want to take responsibility. That's your, that's your job, to the helmet. So I think it's two different approaches. So for us, that was probably a really big learning uh, and something that we need to talk about. After kicking horse, that was definitely like a slap in the face for me and I had to like, okay, this is uh, definitely not where I want to be, but I just have to, you know, get back into my game and um, try to find my strengths and I think I could show it here. Consistency, that is how you get it done. If you want to be a champion, you have to be consistent. 
blow my whistle, baby. My first year on the Fiat World Tour, I felt alone. I was maybe hoping for more support from the other athletes. Okay, just a, a quick update. We are having the competition tomorrow, if it's good enough. There is some new snow coming on Monday, but then after that, it's just like bad weather after bad weather. I've been judging on the World Tour since year one. The changes came mostly from the riders. We've seen, for example, this year in kicking horse from the women's category. Right from the top ropes, Emma Patterson. Whoa. It was just incredible. All the girls put down their runs. Boom! Holy crap. It was just so hard to judge. And I have to say that someone like Edvig started last year to just show that, yeah, like a women's category can do backflip, big ones, things that would stand out, uh, men or women's category, it doesn't really matter. And that's the beauty of it, is like you, you just need one rider to push for suddenly having the full field to actually really pushing hard and make this uh, competition really much more interesting to watch, but also to judge. It's just free ride, bro, and it goes off tomorrow, and you're gonna see a good show. So stay in tune and keep it locked. With only a few more days remaining here before the third stop of the Freeride World Tour here in Odino, Akali Sandora, let's take a closer look at the standings. Our current leader in the ski women's ranking, Ariana Tricomi, may not be informed to defend her championship title after announcing that she injured her ligament. Hot on her heels is Jessica Hodder from New Zealand, as well as Hedvig Vessel out of Norway, who both have a win to their name and will be looking to improve their score here in Ordino Akalis. The ski men field, the tightest race of all. The championship title is completely up for grabs. Currently in first place, Andrew Pollard from the US, Rookie of the Year 2019 and third place finisher here in Andorra. Can you actually explain the, the scoring system? Do you know I'm it? I'm not the best person. Okay. I like, I could be, I stop recording. I just don't agree with it that much. Because it's subjective to a degree? Oh, yeah. The it's judging? super subjective and you don't want to be the guy who's like, I got underscored. I think he's upset. Well, it's just complicated because there's nothing that is set in stone. We're sitting back and we just open our mind to whatever the riders want to show us. One day it could be a big mountain chargey line that wins, and the other day it could be a freestyle line that wins. If you focus on the score too much, like you'll get burnt out so quick, and it'll just suck. I don't know, man. You look at Norway, though, it's like it's about competition for her. I don't think Hedvig's here to make any friends. Every day I tell myself I'm going to be the Fred Walsh champion. Like, I start every morning with that. Free ride is so much about just me and I feel that I don't care about the competitors, I don't care about the others, I'm just going to do my thing. Confidence has always been super, super important. Like I need to know that I can do it. If I doubt my run or my capability that day or on top, I know it's not going to work. This one I'm excited for, Neil Hedvig Vessel, former Olympian, former mogul skier. She won last year in Fieberbrunn. She wants to win here in Ordino Arcalis today. Very aggressive into here. Are we going to see it, Neil? Yeah, she stomps it too. Hedvig Vessel so clean. Wow, we another backflip in the women's freeride field. Like you're saying, freeride is becoming almost freestyle compulsory if you want to win or at podium. We yeah, uh, we will see what the judges have to say about that. But those judging criteria absolutely blasting out the top. Aaron style, technique, fluidity, all of it. Let's see what the judges thought. 83 for Hedvig Vessel. Look at the relief on her face. She wanted this. She was hungry for it. And she was willing to risk it. But what I'm really excited to see right now is Jackie Paso. She is in the start gate. She is the defending champion here in Ordino Arcalis in Andorra. She would love nothing more than to stand on the top of the podium again. She had such a strong run some huge airs here last year. Taking this top here deep and spread eagle, potentially unintentionally, straight into another air from Jackie Paso. That's a great way to get the judges' attention. Just grab them by the collar as soon as you come out of the gate with two quick airs. And Jackie, another big send and clean. Jackie Paso's on one right now, Neil. Everyone's friends until the scores come out and then there's drama for a sec. 
78-3-3 for Jackie Passo. Not quite enough to knock Hedvig off the top, but second place. So Jackie backing up her win here with a second here this year. That's another strong result. Ordino Arkeli's good to Jackie Passo. I mean, not everyone thought so. We reviewed some of the runs. I think there were uh, some people would have put some riders in front of some other, and I think the thing is just more up to what you are thinking riding is, really. Are you guys getting, like, heat? Like, are you guys getting... We got a bit of heat from Andorra, and it's that argument always of traditional versus progression. Yeah. Any idiot can go and ski off a cliff. Yeah. yeah. Like, fast as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that takes a lot of commitment and skill to land a trip. Blow my whistle, baby. It's like I'm changing hats. They say women are good at multitasking, I don't know. I don't know. I find me sad, I'm fever fun to say. Yeah, now we're doing the insider. It's fun, but it's more fun to be an athlete. Is it though? If you're our Norwegian superstar, you gotta deal with a photographer, a film crew, your team manager, your boyfriend that is somehow always lost. This leader bib mindfuck, on top of a concussion you got in training, and your coach on your ass to do your homework because there are two start gates in Fieberbrunn, so you need to prepare two lines. It's crunch time here in Fieberbrunn. At the full stop of the Freer World Tour, we typically see amazing action since it's the last chance for riders to get those valuable points to qualify for Verbier and for the tour next year. With the action going down here on Sunday, let's take a look at predictions. Ski women. If Hedvig Vessel wins here in Fieberbrunn, she becomes world champion. So there she is, right where we want her, back in the leader bib. A win, a loss, a win. The title at her fingertips. Good morning, Freeride fans. Neil, what have we got here today? Wow, we, this is the stuff that dreams are made of. It's Bluebird, it's Deep Howl, the venue looks amazing. It's the first real big face we've seen this year on the tour, Neil. Yeah, that's right. Start one and start two. We've got two different options. Not starting from the top this year as we did last year due to snow conditions. They said that it might be too warm for the later category to go on the Lucas Rites. And that made me, or like made all of the girls pick two lines on both sides. And it's kind of like, which side is better? Lorraine Huber, the third member of our team, 2017 Freeride World Tour Champion. You can see her there in the start gate. She's ready to go. Lorraine, do you hear me? Looking like she's having a good time up there. Man, being a forerunner on a day like this, couldn't ask for a better job. Those turns just look like absolute pleasure. Lorraine, do you hear me? Like the snow quality is good top to bottom in the sun or the shade at the moment, which is also helpful information whether the snow is changing on the lookers right part of the face, which is the sunnier aspect and can heat up a bit quickly. And hopefully the snow stays good for all the riders that choose to go there. I think I'll go on lookers right. I think that's still the best. Your wires are everywhere. You look a little ridiculous. And I'm loving every minute of it because this is what people want. Really beautiful women that you're low-key jealous of to not succeed. So the conditions are changing, everyone's crashing, and Lorraine is freaking out. And that does something to Hedvig's confidence. Can you feel that tension? Because I know I was. I was, <laughs> I was feeling a fair share uh, of my own. Wow. Tension. No. Thanks, Katie. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. Big Vessel, your current leader, I think she could take the title with the win here today. She's on course. I can't find her. Oh, fuck, there she is. So Hedvig right now, she is sitting in first overall. She's always down to get it done on these big faces. She's got the freestyle. She's been working super hard on her ski technique and her sort of big mountain chop, spending a lot of time in the big mountains. And Hedvig Vessel looking to start her campaign, but getting caught up and tipping over that cliff. What? No. no. And she lost a ski. She didn't get a score. No score. That's it. I think that was a smart decision, for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah. On the other hand, like in retrospect, it might be easier for you to ski sunbaked snow than powder as well. I don't know how you feel about that, but 
Yeah. But yeah, maybe. It was super chewed up in there. Um, I was, it was like a 50% chance almost of landing it, maybe. Maybe a bit more, but. Yeah. Elizabeth had a huge crash in there. Yeah. She hurt her ankle. Yeah, I know. Yeah. She had okay, actually. Yeah, she's good. Lauren, I'm yes. going to change the batteries of this. Yes, okay. Thank you. Not bleeding anymore. yesterday how it went and what you think happened? Fuck. I, I think we started like a good conversation but then it was like too much and too much magic just like mm -hmm. telling me what to do and then it was just that you lost your focus. Yeah. Were you looking at the live stream up? On no. The start? Oh, I didn't weren't. have time. I was looking at all the photos to try to find my entrance and stuff on that side. You, okay. Yeah, so you really hadn't done enough homework on that side. <sighs> yeah. Because I was still deciding on the small or the big jump. Yeah. And then I talked oh, to... Oh, the small or the big jump. <laughs> I told you that doesn't go, that big jump. Yeah, but I talked to Anders and he was like, you can do it. Okay. So I was like, oh, maybe I can do it. Yeah. I know I can go big. I know I can do that. But then you're like, no, I don't think it works. So I was like, oh, okay, fuck, maybe it doesn't work. Or do it. I don't know. Has Anders even skied that face before? Like, I've competed on it seven times. I don't understand why you would even listen to Anders. I felt, I, I don't know what... <sighs> Fuck. She doesn't trust me. That's what the problem is. Oh, that's it. for sure. I think you, like, hyped her up, you know? Yeah. No. Fuck, he shouldn't be getting involved. What the fuck? Who do you think he is? What he's talking about? Jesus. I don't just think the feedback was not good. Yeah. Or not what I needed. She hasn't jumped anything like that? Like, this year? And I, I just need someone who, like, who give me energy and, and that I... I believing in myself, you know, that I just like, yes, you can do it, this is amazing, you're so strong and blah, 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 I need that boost. I question things a lot, that's my thing, which honestly I think is a good thing to have in this sport, that's probably why I've been around for so long. Yeah, and I can't have it, I can't have someone who questions me in every decision I make, because if they don't trust my decisions, then, then I'm gonna doubt. If she had have jumped that, she could have like really hurt herself. She was gonna jump on a rock. For our, the relationship we are in, or are trying to be, we are not the best match. Anyway, but I'm happy with the moving forward thing. I'm happy with um, her being in control and just like saying if she needs me or not. If she doesn't, I'm, I'm totally fine with it, totally. Totally. I'm excited for her to, like, figure Verbier out on her own, you know? I think, yeah. uh, I think then she won't have to deal with uh, even, I don't know, the, the whole coaching scenario. It, it will just be her yeah. and it might simplify things. Wait a minute. Did I push it too far? Like, is this whole thing my fault? Because if it wasn't for me, then there wouldn't have been a movie. And if there wasn't a movie, then these two wouldn't have had to spend the entire winter smiling for the camera and living out a contrived narrative that one was exactly what the other needed. Maybe it was too much. Plus, they wouldn't have had to spend a full day attempting to pull off my brilliant idea to do sort of satirical but ostentatious, almost camp-style comedy as caricatured versions of themselves clown skiing through bushes to be told that the concept had to be scrapped entirely because neither of them can act. What are you, a woman or something? No? Yeah, yes? They would have been able to just live, just be. No power dynamics, no cameras, no me trying to trigger them in interviews. Or like it just further adds to the whole thing of like, she kind of cuts you out. Yeah. Like pre-comp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no fear of failure, or vulnerability, showing up as ego. <laughs> Why am I not there? Oh, I don't know, you fucked up. <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. Maybe some ego, probably some ego. Just two 
Very capable athletes bouncing ideas off each other. Nah. Everyone knows that passionate, ambitious, beautiful, smart, stubborn, competitive, hardworking, self-absorbed, incredibly talented, motivated, annoyingly high-achieving, lovable, tenacious-ass women are completely impossible to work with. You're a camera operator, obviously has jokes, no man. idea how to use a camera, quit, which is pretty quit, much like, as I expected. coming up to her and being like, oh, I see you're an all-female filmmaking crew. Could I perhaps tell you how my AirPods work so that you can pick up what you're talenting from across the field? I was just trying to give a bit of advice. Blow my whistle, baby. I know you're crazy for me. You need to uh, smile more. Katie, uh, where's your other camera off? Okay. I can only see one. Colleen, you're doing a great job. We don't need another camera operator. We just, we're good with one. Blow my whistle, baby. Okay. Let's just keep going this way. I mean, you guys do your athletes, we'll do ours, okay? So, um, Christopher. Actually, can I, can I wear your guys' mic? It's funny that it's just skiing. <laughs> yeah. yeah.